Welcome to the Inspire Me podcast channel. Thank you for all of you who have been following this podcast channel. I'm really excited here to have Mark here with me today. How are you, Mark? Well, thank you, Leonie, and um, thank you for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be here with you, Mark. Um, so for everyone who's listening, uh, we will be talking today about mindset and how your mindset informs and drives your behaviour whether you are a professional or an leader, manager, executive, what Mark will be sharing with us today is a technique that would really encourage you to inspire you to have a think about the way your mindset shapes your behavior. Um, so um, the, uh, the other thing I wanna mention is that you know, for this podcast channel, it is the purpose of this channel is to listen to people's success stories, their lessons learned to inspire you to take action to improve uh, the quality of your life personally and professionally. So I really hope that at the end of this session, you have an action that you're going to write down and implement right away to really make that difference in your life. So first things first, I'll just quickly like to mention how I met Mark. Um, so I worked on with Mark in recent years alongside with him when we were working um, on uh, a number of different projects, but one, one, one in particular where we were conducting assessment centers together and, and doing a bit of recruitment. Um, and we were actually in um, uh, Kulungata, Kul was that right, Mark? Yes, uh, yes, yes, it was. Yes, it was, yep. yes. And um, unfortunately, I had a real a personal issue that occurred. Um, I became unfortunately a victim of identity fraud. But in that moment, um, Mark quickly could use his emotional intelligence to pick up something's not right with Leone. And then he was able to really um, uh, be there for me as a friend, as a mentor, as a colleague to help me navigate through what I was experiencing. Um, so during that period of time, it was a very difficult time for me. But from um, but when, when you know that when, some, when you meet someone in your career or in your business that that has supported you along the journey, that person counts and they will make, that you will always remember this person. So Mark, um, I see you as the, you know, full of wisdom, full of life, so positive. <laughs> and um, it has been a, a joy having you in my life. Thank you. Thank you, Leonie. <laughs> and, um, um, yeah, you're so. already demonstrating um, one of the mindsets that we can choose to have, and you're absolutely <laughs> living and breathing. We're going to explore that a little more as we but, go through the podcast. Yeah. So Mark's background, he has more than 30 years' experience um, working in leadership and management roles, and he is uh, you know, a facilitator, leadership coach, career coach, speaker, and also a you know, qualified Abenda certified facilitator as well. And we'll know about that technique a little bit more in a moment. Uh, and so my first question for you, Mark, is if you can just share with us a little bit more about your journey, your career and your business journey. Wow, okay. How to summarize a, a very long life full of learning along the way. And probably the best way is that um, my career journey in was largely corporate. Um, it was actually a 40 year corporate career in sales and marketing um, across quite a range of industries. And the, the, the exposure to a range of industries and people working in different roles at different levels became, it became really apparent during that journey that business is about people working is about people. And that really underpinned how I navigated my journey. And then later moving into management and leadership roles, it started with people. Now, did we always get it right? Absolutely not. But the journey of learning for me was less about techniques and frameworks and tool sets to lead and manage. It was more about how we engaged others to leverage the bigger outcomes. Um, so that's been a lifelong journey and it's been a passion. Um, did that answer your question or did I go off track there? <laughs> and that's all good, all good, moving along. Um, Mark, what brings you joy at work? 
Um, so in my current role as a career and leadership coach, um, I absolutely love the fact that um, we can actually help others in a really impactful way, in very tangible ways. And it's the little things that really bring me absolute joy. And I think this is a case for many coaches as well. When we are in a dialogue with somebody that we're working with and we ask a question and you see that smile on their face where that question has opened up another door that they've never gone through and opened them up to a world of possibilities. And in that moment, for me, that's precious because you see it in the way they react to that question before they even open their mouth. Um, I just love that. I, I can... I could do that all day, every day. I'd do it for free. I think uh, yourself and uh, Leonie Stanfield, another, another speaker on our show, uh, we all have that in common as a coach to, to notice that moment when you see the facial reaction of a person when you're coaching them and you see them trans, um, transition in, the, in their mindset <laughs> to then go, ah, oh, aha. You've got me. I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, we yeah. can all relate. Yeah. Uh, and Mark, you mentioned, uh, you know, obviously with your experience in leadership and management, you've seen many, many things, good things, um, interesting things and so forth. But I'm really curious as to what was a setback in your, like, in your career that has influenced you to be who you are today? Um, so... The one that springs to mind in a career sense was um, I was in a team I love to be part of. Um, our boss was fantastic. He was, he was the best of the bosses that I've ever had, um, leader, if you like. And essentially what he did is he role modelled all the behaviours he expected of us and he believed in us. He gave us accountability and he helped us to grow and develop. And, of course, when you're a good leader like that, you get promoted. And his job came up. And I was one of the candidates for that role. And I really wanted that role. Um, but what I hadn't done, and I didn't know any better, I was so busy doing the job that I hadn't actually prepared for the interview and recruitment process, and I totally botched it. Okay, off point with my messaging and um, understanding what I needed to talk to bring to the role, just totally off point, um, didn't get the job. And a couple of things played out for that. So the first good bit was that um, the very senior manager that had overseen the recruitment said, Mark, I'm sorry, I've let you down. I haven't actually helped or trained you to get ready to apply for this job and gave me some exposure to a bit of career coaching. That was really helpful. So had the experience on the receiving end. The other thing that played out with that is there was an external appointment and this leader was not a good leader. They were not a good leader because they were very self-focused, almost narcissistic. They were a micromanager and a driver and saw people as objects and they fractured the team. That bent me out of shape. It was just a downhill spiral. So how do we dig out of that? Um, so for me, that was a moment that was a mistake and it was on me and the events that unfolded from that. But it's only a bad thing if we don't learn from it. And I learned from those lessons. So going forward in future careers, it was reflecting on what good leadership was about. It was taking on board the, ex the experiences that I've had in both my leadership, where I've got it wrong, and the leadership I've seen in others and try to help or shape that so that others can become the best leaders they can be. Um, so from a mistake, we can also draw inspiration. And it was very powerful inspiration for me because I didn't like being on the receiving end of bad leadership, either of my own or, or of others. Reflecting on that experience, you said you, you didn't prepare for that interview. And I see that happen so often in, uh, and particularly in, in organisations where people are acting in the role and so they're acting in the role and they think that they most likely will get the job 
So they try totally. to prepare for the interview. <laughs> you notice what I've done. You know me. This is a, okay. Just appoint me. You know, you've seen what I've done. And it just doesn't yes. cut it, does it? It doesn't cut yes. it. We need to be able to articulate what we bring to a role. Yes. And I think a lot of people who are listening can relate to that or know somebody who's, who's in that situation and how um, they can learn from the lesson that you've learned as well. Uh, now, which leads to the next um, question. I'm really curious. And I have seen you speak about the Abinger technique, um, but if you could just tell people a little bit about what that is and, and then follow on with an example, that would be wonderful. Oh, look, absolutely. So um, firstly, let's be really clear about the mindset that we are referencing here. And that mindset is, is not necessarily the internal talk, the self-talk. The mindset I'm referring to here and the Arbinger view of mindset is it is the way that we are choosing to view our world, our circumstances and the people around us. Okay, and, and we actually get to make choices. We make those choices constantly throughout the day. And there's only two choices we can make. We can either be inwardly focused or self-focused and that plays out with what does this mean for me? How does it help me get my job done? Um, what's the threat here for me? That's for most of us, and certainly was mine, that was my default. I didn't, I wasn't aware of anything else. But we can actually make another choice. And the second choice in our mindset is I'm part of a group of people that are on a journey together. What does this situation mean for us? And if you and I are colleagues, how am I viewing you? Am I viewing you as somebody that helps me get things done? Or are you somebody that's getting in the way for me? Or am I viewing you as a person that's also on this journey that also has goals to achieve and has challenges along the way? And if I'm open to seeing you as a person in that way, then only then can I be open to the way that I might conceive and execute my role. And what would it mean if I did my job in a way that might also help you to succeed in your job? It's because we're in this together, we're working to a common goal or a purpose. So those two mindsets actually drive very different behaviors. And with us all being humans, we actually respond to how we are being seen. Now, if I see you as an object, if I don't treat you as a person, you will know that. If I see you as a person and engage you as a person, it invites a very different response. And if we're mindful of that, if we can catch ourselves in the moment about the choices we're making to view a situation and somebody we are dealing with, it then invites the next question which choice is going to be the most effective as we go forward in our engagement? Um, how does that sit with you? I have uh, watched a video on this technique yesterday and you really have shared um, your point of view in that inward mindset and outward mindset and how it can really try, like, change the way we operate in the workplace. And I think this is a really exciting one for people who are listening to notice when are you being treated as objects versus when are you being treated as a person? So it'd be quite um, groundbreaking to start to reflect on this. So I'm really excited to hear the next part, which is an actual example that you can share with us, Mark. Um, absolutely, Leonie. So look, um, oh, look, I could talk about the people I've worked with um, but I'd like to, in this case, share a personal example, my own journey. Um, because one of the things about our mindset is oftentimes we're not aware of it. And when we're not aware of our choice of mindset, we are absolutely blind to the alternatives. And that, that was my journey. Um, this, is, this is difficult for me to admit to. Anyone that knows me would know this, but it was difficult for me to admit to that um, I was, was and probably still am, a bit of a legend in my own lunchtime, alpha male. Um, so we have very clear views of what we need to do and we drive that relentlessly. So that kind of mindset can make it very difficult 
for us to take a moment to stop and think about how we might be part of the problem. That's not in our, our psyche at all. And, and we're totally blind to it. So coming out of the previous experience I'd, I'd spoken to around um, the poor leadership and the blaming and getting bent out of shape, part of the leadership development that the, the company invested in me was a pilot course in Arbinger. And it got to a stage where they said, let's talk about uh, somebody that you're in conflict with. And I had an absolute beauty. I had another division manager uh, that I saw as doing deals in a market segment that I had opened up and he was doing these short-term deals to get his KPIs, wasn't in the best interest of the customer or the, the company. And um, I didn't like the guy. I didn't like him at all. And so I wrote all that down and unloaded. And I'm feeling good. This is a really good story. And then the next question was, so how do you respond to that? What sort of behaviours are you doing? And I went, oh, well, I'm... I'm clipping this guy's wings. I mean, he's, he's not working in the interests of the company or the customer. So I had all these justifications about why I didn't like this guy. And I loved gathering allies to align with this view of this, this other division colony because I didn't like him. And I wrote down my behaviours on a sheet of paper in another part. And then we had to fold that sheet of paper in half and pass it to a colleague. And I passed it to a female colleague. And... Um, she read these behaviours and the briefing from the facilitator was, so you've just been past behaviours from a colleague that you know. If you were on the receiving end of those behaviours, how are you now viewing that colleague and how would you respond to them? And this lady said to me, Mark, I thought you were a nice person, but if you're doing these things, you are being a complete a-hole. And I went, no, you don't understand. You know, and, and the facilitator said, stop right there, Mark. He said, before, what's going to come out of your mouth is your justification for your behaviour. Before you go there, because you can always go there, I want you to stop and think about something. What would it be like if you were at your best and this other person was at their best? What would that be like? And because you're in friction with this other person, what's it costing the company? And I'd actually stopped counting at about 100000 a year in terms of duplicated effort and, and other things we weren't doing because I didn't like it. And it was almost hearing something that you can't unhear. It was like a curse. And it really itched me because his next question was, how might you be part of the problem? Have you really got this guy right? And it just ate me. And I resisted it for two weeks and I just couldn't. And I still remember going to his door and saying, knocking on the door and his body language was tight. And I said, Jason, I don't know that I've been giving you a fair go. And I'm choking on these words because I was never wrong. I couldn't be wrong. And his body language changed in an instant. And he got a frown. He said, come in and talk to me. And I sat down and told him how, what I'd seen and how I felt about it. And I could tell that he was actually wounded. I'd got this guy wrong. We resolved our differences in five minutes. And what was replaced from resolving those differences wasn't a neutral position. It actually developed more of a trusted relationship. We were now able to have real conversations. Realised we're actually on the same page. We wanted the same things. So we then got together and, and began to collaborate. Now, first off, 100 grand a year in costs resolved in about 10 or 15 minutes. Found a way to work together and save that extra expense. What happened next, though, blindsided me. The impact of what we did two years later, I'm in a market segment with my team delivering $40 million worth of new revenue that we had struggled to get into. And the start for that journey came right back to this conversation, the trust in the relationship, how we shared information, collaborated together to get into that market would never have happened. So that's the power of mindset, just choosing a different view, way to view a situation, be open to the idea. We can always go back to what we've had, but just having the courage to explore how we might be part of the problem, how we might be choosing to view a situation drives all those behaviours and the way that people respond to us. Um, so again, I don't know whether my passion's gotten a little in the way here, Leone. You might have to edit some of this. Oh, no, it's perfect, Mark. It's perfect. I'm sure everyone is listening attentively and 
I certainly have. And I, I feel like so many people can relate to the story where we have conflict with our other colleagues or internal stakeholders. And the fact that you were able to resolve it in such a short period of time is it's just you know incredible. More importantly, is that it's all the preparation before that, the mindset, exploring your mindset inward, outward, and, and having that facilitator there to actually ask you these questions, are you part of the problem? Absolutely. It is a fundamental question and one that we will resist. And the irony of it, Leonie, is that if we are open to the idea that we could be part of the problem, it's like playing a computer game and getting an unbelievably good cheat code because it opens the door to a world of possibilities of other things we can do to help the situation go right. And it almost always results in us getting things done faster, better, and with less effort and with greater impact. It almost always turns out that way. Thank you for sharing. Thank you, Mark. Um, so there's a few questions that I ask all of our guests on this show. Uh, and I love these questions because it's, so, it's really awesome. Um, so what is a book that you'd like to give away? If you were to give a gift to somebody, what is the name of that book? Okay, so um, look, it obviously it depends on the subject matter, but in the area of career and leadership, and because we've spoken of this, my passion, and I happen to have one here, um, this book, Leadership and Self-Deception, is a game changer. Um, there's another one, The Outward Mindset. They're both about mindset, both written by contributors from Armager, real-life experiences of how this stuff works. Um, this has an impact on people. So this is the one I love to share with them. And interestingly, it is about relationships with people. This stuff plays into our personal relationships as well. Can you just read out the title of that book again, please? Absolutely. So it's called Leadership and Self-Deception. Leadership and Self-Deception. Just for the, our listeners who are listening to the podcast. Yep, thank you. Uh, and, and I was a yeah. living and breathing example of that. And, and <laughs> you know, resistant. No, this, uh, this is interesting. I see how this works for other people. It couldn't possibly be me. And we are just, we are, if we're feeling like that, we are so the people it can benefit from being just a little open to exploring this. And I'm just curious, Mark, what do you do? You know, you're one of the most positive people that I know. What do you do on a daily basis that you can share with us um, to, that makes you happier and more and productive? Um, again, I think it's a common thing. Um, Leonie, I know that you start your days with meditation and breathing. For me, um, it is around some physical exercise again in the morning. Let's get it done in the morning. Um, at least a walk, uh, ideally something a little more vigorous for, for me. And I find that exercise is a really lovely reset button. A reset button from all the worries and things that go over in our mind the day before and maybe at night. But also it helps us to set ourselves up for the day with calm and energy that no matter how many cups of coffee you have, the energy from some exercise is that better again. So that's a daily routine that's really important. Every morning you would either walk or exercise every single day. Absolutely, morning. absolutely. Yep. Uh, just as you, you would meditate, <laughs> part of our routine. And it's really important that we make that time for ourselves so that we can be at our best during the day. Yes. Well, thank you so much for sharing. Is there anything else you'd like to add to this, to to this topic today? Yes, actually, a, a final note. So maybe a call to action. Um, there is um, my call to action to anybody listening to this podcast is get curious in other people. Of course, we can judge them and we can put labels on them, but get really curious. Understand where they're coming from and what their goals and concerns are. Just get curious and see what happens. See how they respond to you. 
I love it. I love it. Thank you so much, Mark. Um, thank you for everyone for listening. I really encourage you all to, as, as Mark mentioned, to take take note, to take an action. In the next, I would say encourage you in the next seven days. If you take action within the next seven days, you'll find that everything you've learned today will be reinforced in your career or business. So um, thank you so much, Mark. Thank you, Leonie. Thank you very much for having me on. So much fun. It was so much fun. <laughs> <laughs>